And good afternoon, everyone. It is my sincere pleasure to be here at the PD Egypt 2019 uh, conference. Thank you, my dear friend, Professor Dr. Hamad Al Khayyad, for that very warm introduction. And thank you, uh, Dr. Wade, for the invitation to join here today. So, at Liptus Nutrition, the slide you see in front of you is how we begin every presentation. Breast milk is the number one choice for infant nutrition. Uh, this is something that is undisputed. If a mother is not able to breastfeed for whatever reason, then the Liptus portfolio is the number two choice. Breast milk, of course, is unsurpassed. And it's important to understand the source of the milk and where it comes from. At Liptus, where our formula is made, the milk is collected daily. It goes to the factories from one side, and on the other side comes out the finished infant formula. It is produced in a single factory. We do not ship the powder from factory to factory, which increases the risk of contamination. And all of you know very well that in the market, when you produce infant formula, it is a very sensitive manufacturing process. That's why in all the facilities that produce the Liptus formula, we start with milk on one side and we finish with the sealed container of formula on the other side. This means that we ensure the integrity of the formula and the production process. We use milk from cows that have not been given antibiotics, hormones, pesticides, or any genetic manipulation. The process is automated. We use the most advanced wet blending techniques. In fact, with wet blending, it is a fully automated, safer process. Those that use dry blending introduce a level of risk to the manufacturing of the infant formula. This allows us to produce more complex recipes. The dry blending method is fewer, less complex recipes. Our formula reconstitutes better, with a better solubility in the water. It is much more hygienic. The dry blending is less hygienic because you're exposing the powdered formula to the air, which is at risk of contamination. Our formulation is non-dusty, the, the, fla the flavors are retained, and the agglomeration of the powder is stable within the wet blending process. Dry blending is easier, but it carries more risk. No portion of our product is handled outside of the drying chamber, whereas in the dry blending, it is manually manipulated and moved from facility to facility. So when you hear in the media about how some formula brands have experienced contamination, a lot of that is caused by the manufacturing process. We use a closed system, wet blending, from milk to powder in one factory. When companies move the powder from factory to factory, they introduce the risk of contamination. It costs us more money, but we still provide it at competitive pricing. Liptus Nutrition has the Lipto Milk portfolio, which is the affordable portion of our portfolio that contains all the nutrients needed for healthy growth and development. And we have our premium formula, the Liptomil Plus range, which includes all essential nutrients enhanced and enriched with the polyunsaturated fatty acids, AADHA, prebiotics, we use galacto-oligosaccharides, and the five major nucleotides. So the Liptomil Plus portfolio with AADHA, prebiotics, and nucleotides is developed for healthier growth and development. We have balance with the prebiotics GOS, to help stimulate the bifidobacteria in the GI. This is the closest to the human milk oligosaccharides, and galacto-oligosaccharides is the most effective to prevent the adherence of pathogenic E. coli on the GI epithelial surfaces. It is much more effective than the fructo-oligosaccharides and other prebiotics. We have a balanced ratio of weighted casein to reduce the incidence of colic and GI discomfort. We use low-protein recipes to reduce the risk of childhood obesity. 
Our range is 1.2 to 2 grams per 100 cc's, and the weighted casein ratio varies from stage 1 to 2 to 3 to match the levels found in early and late breast milk. We have the five major nucleotides to reduce the risk of diarrhea and enhance the body's immune response to vaccinations. We have a powerful combination of antioxidants to reduce the risk of childhood allergic disease, including selenium at levels found in mother's breast milk. The ratio of vitamin C to iron is optimized to maximize iron absorption and reduce the incidence of constipation. All our recipes are sucrose free, so if there is inadequate weight gain or failure to thrive on breastfeeding and you need to supplement with a formula, you can do so without the risk of breast milk rejection because we do not add any sucrose to our recipes. We have among the lowest levels of potential renal solute load. The premium recipe is fortified with LC PUFAs, docosahexaenoic and arachidonic acid to maximize cognitive and visual development. Infants that are fed breast milk, of course, have the highest IQ, both in terms of the performance, verbal, and full-scale IQs. Infants fed with formulas enriched with AADHA are second to breast milk, and of course, without AADHA, you have lower cognitive outcomes. In terms of visual acuity, those infants fed formula with AADHA have 20-21 vision as compared to 20-20 for those fed breast milk. And of course, without the uh, PUFAs, it is much lower. We have choline and taurine for proper brain retinal psychomotor development, vitamins A and D for bone and tooth formation, normal growth, inositol and biotine, as well as iron and zinc for brain development and calcification of bones and wound healing. So our portfolio provides the balance with the prebiotics, GOS, balanced weighted casein and low protein content, protection with the five major nucleotides to enhance the immune response, powerful combination of antioxidants with the optimal ratio of vitamin C to iron that is always sucrose free with the lowest potential renal solute load, and progression with the LC PUFAs, choline, taurine, vitamins A and D, inositol, biotine, iron, and zinc. Now, just as a reminder, our Lipto milk formula and the entire portfolio contains the appropriate levels of the essential fatty acids, uh, AA and ALA, at the ratios of 9 to 1, which is well within the guideline range. Now, more recently, here in Egypt, we introduced our Lipto milk plus AR, our anti-regurgitation recipe, with added carob bean gum. You know, gastroesophageal reflux is a normal uh, function. The body goes through that normally. We have some of the contents of the esophagus passing back up in, uh, with or without regurgitation. This is a normal physiologic process in healthy infants. On the other hand, gastroesophageal reflux disease is when the reflux causes pathological consequences, esophagitis, nutritional compromise, or respiratory complications. So that's the focus of our anti-regurgitation recipe. So of course, the pathogenic factor is in GERD. Essentially, the transient lower esophageal sphincter is loosened, it's relaxed, you have increased intra-abdominal pressure, reduced esophageal capacitance, and delayed gastric emptying. So when the lower esophageal sphincter does not close properly, the stomach contents leak back into the esophagus, causing the reflux. And when we see this image, this is the mechanism mechanically of what occurs in this process. The sphincter should stay closed. It does not always, and that can cause the complications leading to GERD. So when the stomach contents are regurgitated back into the esophagus, the persistent episodes will reduce the food intake which of course will cause nutritional and energy deficiencies and this can manifest in terms of failure to thrive or poor development. The time frame during which the incidence of regurgitation is the highest is typically during the age of four to six months. In terms of management, you know, there's an algorithm developed by Esfagan and Asfagan and the most recent version published as of 2018 when you have a case presentation infants with suspicion of GERD, you conduct the normal history and physical exam. 
look for the presence of alarm sign. If the alarm sign is present, then you must address the alarm sign and refer appropriately. If there is no alarm sign, then you continue breastfeeding, avoid overfeeding, but also there's an indication for thickened feeds. Liptomil plus AR with carabine gum is among the products indicated in this algorithm. If the infant improves, you continue with the management. If the case does not improve, well there, we now have to dig deeper and try to understand what the causation is, because it may not be a physical issue, there may be an instance of cow milk protein allergy. So the algorithm then advises that you consider two to four weeks of a protein hydrolysate. In Egypt, we have our HA recipe, Liptomil plus HA, with partially hydrolyzed whey protein. If the infant improves, then you continue the management and you discuss the milk protein reintroduction at the follow. You know, if you have a case where the infant is being breastfed, and you're looking to use a formula, you have to come to a full stop and conduct a proper history to assess if there is a risk of allergy in the family history. If there is, then you should be using or recommending an HA recipe. If the case is not improved after using the protein hydrolysate, you can go back to a thickened feed or refer to a pediatric gastroenterologist. At the referral, the differential diagnosis will be revisited and additional testing or medication trial will be considered. If you're in an area where referral is not possible, then you can consider a one to two months of acid suppression therapy and then wean if the symptoms are improved. If weaning is successful, then the case is over. No further intervention is necessary. If symptoms have not improved and you've not weaned, then again, you revisit the differential diagnoses. So in introducing Liptomil plus AR with added carabine gum, the recipe is identical to Liptomil plus one. All we have done is reduced the prebiotic galactolocosaccharides and added carabine gum because they are both prebiotics. Liptomil plus AR is a thickened formula with carabine gum indicated for infants suffering recurrent regurgitation or GERD. So carabine gum is a galactomannan vegetable gum pulled from the seeds of the carob tree and it's used as a thickening agent. It is specifically processed to make it acceptable and pharmacologically adaptable to the needs of the infant suffering from GERD. It is, uh, it is not digested like starch, which means it is not broken down by salivary amylase, it is not broken down by the enzymes, it is thickened in the bottle and stays thickened when it gets into the GI. So all you need to do is slightly enlarge the holes of the teat. And because it is a non-digestible prebiotic, it has no impact on the energy or nutrient calculations of the infant formula, neither does it affect the osmolarity of the recipe. Carabine gum has been specifically designed to be mixed with infant formula. It thickens the formula, and provides a prebiotic effect to drive the growth of the beneficial bifidobacteria. And because it's a prebiotic, it also helps to reduce the incidence of constipation. So when we compare the pros and cons of carabine gum versus starch, well, both products thicken formula. Carabine gum has prebiotic therapies, starch does not. Uh, carabine gum is not at risk of degradation by salivary amylase. It does not alter the energy or caloric cal calculation and has no impact on osmolarity. So it is as easy to use as Liptomil plus one. Liptomil plus AR with carabine gum is effective in decreasing esophageal acid exposure, the number of visible and measurable reflux, the symptoms associated with acid reflux, the height of reflux in the esophagus when it does happen, and it helps to reduce the incidence of body weight loss in infants suffering from vomiting and re recurrent regurgitation. When infants use Liptomil plus AR, we dramatically reduce the incidence of reflux and acid exposure by over 70%. Liptomil plus AR, compared to unthickened formula, reduces regurgitation, excessive uh, regurgitation and vomiting by up to 50%, and contains the same stable level of energy osmolarity and nutrients 
to meet the infant's nutritional needs. Carabine gum is a palatable, safe, and well-tolerated addition to the infant formula. It is not broken down by salivary amylase, helps stimulate the bifidobacteria, and enhances peristalsis and bowel movement for better digestion. Liptomil plus AR is fortified with GOS, the prebiotic, for better GI function and immunity. It still contains the AADHA for visual and cognitive development and the five major nucleotides to enhance the immune system and enhance its response to the vaccinations. Liptomil plus AR contains iron at the appropriate ratio with vitamin C to minimize the risk of iron deficiency anemia and reduce the risk of constipation. Like all Liptus recipes, it is sucrose-free to be easily combined with breast milk. So Liptomil plus AR is available now across Egypt. It is a pre-thickened infant milk formula with parabene gum for infants suffering from recurrent regurgitation or GERD. Uh, before we finish, we'll have a brief review of our Liptomil plus HA recipe because there's a lot more interest and discussion regarding allergies and their prevention. So of course, when we look at the algorithm for the prevention of cow milk protein allergy, in looking at the algorithm, if the infant can be exclusively breastfed, then we're done. Nothing else to uh, discuss, no further uh, history to be taken. If breastfeeding is not possible, then you come to a full stop. You take a complete family history to see if there's any history of allergy within the direct family members. If you cannot take a history, then you should use a hypoallergenic formula until the allergy assessment is complete. If you conduct the family history and there's one or more relative that's positive, at that point, you should begin with a cow milk protein uh, partially hydrolyzed formula. If there's no history, then standard cow milk formula is fine. And of course, I always pause here uh, to identify the authors of this algorithm, which includes, of course, uh, Professor Dr. Sanat Youssef, and Professor Dr. Gamal Sami, who joined in developing this algorithm that's used across the Middle East. So, Liptomil plus HA is specifically designed for infants at risk of developing allergy. It helps to decrease the allergy by special treatment of the protein. We remove the casein entirely and we hydrolyze the whey partially in order to slowly introduce the partially hydrolyzed protein. This helps the body's immune system to ac accept the partially hydrolyzed cow milk protein. As I mentioned, the whey protein is partially hydrolyzed, the casein is removed entirely, and the hydrolysis occurs enzymatically. This ensures a consistent size of the peptide with the best taste and odor. We do not heat it because if you heat the protein, it burns, and that makes the taste bitter and unpalatable. We hydrolyze enzymatically in order to ensure a palatable product that has a consistent molecular size. Liptomil plus HA is a 100% partial hydrolyzed whey protein. It still contains the prebiotic SCOS with the five nucleotides, AADHA, vitamin D, and the antioxidants. Now here's something that's very important. If there is a family history of allergy, that infant is at risk. So there's no dispute that they should be given a partially hydrolyzed protein formula. But the reality is, if you take any infant, even those with no risk of allergy, and you randomize them into a partially hydrolyzed formula or a standard formula, you will see that the risk of allergy overall is reduced with a partially hydrolyzed formula. So even though the indication is to prevent cow milk protein allergy, the reality is you actually reduce the incidence of all allergy manifestations by using a partially hydrolyzed formula. So it becomes then an issue of cost. If you have parents that can afford the cost of a partially hydrolyzed formula, that will reduce the cumulative incidence of atopic manifestations even if there is no risk of cow milk protein allergy. Of course, is there, if there's family history, then you should absolutely avoid the standard cow milk formula. In these studies that we've seen over the years, any infant given a partially hydrolyzed formula always has a lower incidence of atopic manifestations. 
Our last specialty that's available in the Egyptian market, Liptomil Plus LF, of course, as the name implies, all the lactose is removed. This is the lactose-free formula. All the lactose is replaced by maltodextrin. We have no lactose, sucrose, and it is gluten-free. With added zinc to reduce severity and duration of diarrhea, and the same level of selenium found in mother's breast milk as an antioxidant. We still have the same five major nucleotides to help repair the intestinal wall, reduce the severity of diarrhea, and increase the lactase enzyme activity. It's fortified with the uh, LC-PUFAs, A and DHA, and does not contain any pre- or probiotics. And the final product that we launched last year in Egypt, Liptogrow Plus 3, our toddler milk formula, uh, because their future starts really every day. Uh, Liptogrow Plus 3 is for infants one year of age and older. It contains the proper nutrients for healthy growth and development, AADHA, prebiotics, five nucleotides, and over 20 five vitamins and minerals. So when we look at the entire Liptus portfolio range in Egypt, we have the Liptus milk, our affordable range with all the essential nutrients for healthy growth and development, our premium Liptus milk plus range with added AADHA, prebiotics, and the five major nucleotides for Liptus milk plus one, two, and Liptus grow plus three. Our specialties, Liptus milk plus HA, indicated for infants at risk of cow milk protein allergy and to reduce the overall risk of atopic manifestations. Liptomil plus LF, a lactose-free formula, and just launched a Liptomil plus AR, the anti-regurgitation recipe with added carabine gum. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sharif, for this uh, nice talk as usual. I have uh, a comment and an announcement, and then uh, uh, it will be open for any questions. Uh, an announcement, the prizes of the company Liptus will be presented at the dinner. The prizes will be at the dinner, but they will ask you, everyone with a number to protect you. Everyone with a number, Mustafa Amar, inshallah. Okay, everyone with a number, please, they will ask you to protect you. This is the announcement. In terms of the comment, thank you, Professor Sharif. Uh, actu uh, uh, actually, uh, I want to comment about the anti-regurge formula. The use of carotene gum is actually um, an, an enhancement for the anti-regurge formula, not only because it's thickening properties, but also, uh, as uh, Dr. Sharif mentioned, uh, it acts as a prebiotic, and it will be fermented, producing short-chain fatty acids, which will augment also the um, absorption of uh, minerals, and at the same time, it will prevent the occurrence of constipation that can occur with any other thickener used for anti regurge formula. The other comment is that um, is, uh, I should insist about the enzymatic hydrolysis for the proteins in the HA formula. This will keep a good taste because other ways for hydrolysis lead to bad taste and make the baby refuse this formula. And now, any questions? Professor. Uh, thanks, Dr. Sharif, uh, and thanks for Lipto Meal in combating iron deficiency anemia in infancy. That's why my question, what's the best ratio for iron and vitamin C, and what's the role of iron, of, of vitamin C? Sure. So in terms of the ratios, the optimal ratio of vitamin C to iron should be greater than 10 to 1. It should be greater than. More is better. Vitamin C is an iron absorption enhancer. So when you hit that ratio, you maximize the absorption of iron, you pull it out of the GI and into the bloodstream where we want it, and out of the GI where it causes constipation. My second question, do you think carob can prevent the absorption of iron as a fiber content? No. Carabine gum is a inert, uh, undigestible uh, prebiotic. It's a, it's, a, it's, 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 it's a fiber that's not going to impact any nutrient, whether iron or other is absorption. Uh, I would add also, uh, as I mentioned, uh, it is uh, being a prebiotic. It is fermented and can induce short-chain fatty acids, making the pH to some extent acidic, which will augment iron absorption, not uh, uh, prevent its absorption. Any questions? Uh, Dr. Tari El Walili, I think it will be the last question. Uh, 
مايك يا مايك للدكتور طارق مايك از رايت جاست كومنت اون ذا بريزنس اوف لوكس كام بين او بيج جام ان از ا ثيكنينج ايجنس It not interfere with the constipating effect of the iron because it is not yes. the fiber yes. of, the, of the carob itself who is cause constipation or may help in the processing of the area. But here, just the look at the gum itself, we're just taking it without interference with the constipating or the business of the gum. So it's a very good idea, and what is this is the best to be it's considered the best, it's the best because for the stock, or whatever it is, it will be. Uh, adding energy will can cause yes. overweight for the children or more sometimes associated with chest problems. Okay. So that's very good to add. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Doctor. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sharif, for this interesting lecture. Uh, now it is my pleasure to introduce uh, the great professor, uh, Professor Alan Locas from England, who will talk about uh, brain and nutrition.